once upon a time in the land of India, there was a kingdom called Bunkhand. Bunkhand was a land full of hillocks and dense forests. Its broad natural scenery was very pleasing to the eyes, and its people were brave and hardworking. In this kingdom lived a pundit called Manarama, who was very simple in his habits and noble-minded. He was well respected and would perform his priestly duties without any greed for money. He would return every evening with the few coins he got thereby. However, his wife Yashoda was fastidious and fond of good living. She liked good clothes, fine living, and prided in moving in high society. One day, while talking to her neighbor, she came to know that the newly crowned king was a very charitable man, and whoever went to him never returned empty-handed. Hearing this, she went to the pundit. The king of this place is very generous. Go to him, and I'm sure he will give you a lot of wealth. Kings gather their riches through sinful means. We should not partake of them. But his wife would not listen to him and forced him to go and try his luck. When Manarama went to the king's court, he treated him with respect and offering. Tell me, what can I do for you? Sire, I don't need any riches. I only want to have four coins of your own earning. You are a strange man to ask for four coins. People ask for gold and precious stones when they come to me. You are insulting me by asking for so little. So, ask for something else. Uh, no, great king. I don't want your riches. They are tainted with sin. I only want four coins, which you have earned by the sweat of your brow. I do not want more. Hearing Manorama's words, the courtiers were hushed into silence, and the king was greatly puzzled. After thinking for a few moments, he said, All right, I will give you what you want, but you'll have to come the day after tomorrow for it. Later that day, when Manorama returned home, his wife asked him eagerly, What did the king give you? He has called me again the day after tomorrow. Splendid! It seems he wishes to give you a lot of wealth, for if it had been little, he could have given it today. Meanwhile, the king was wondering how to get four coins of his own earnings. He had never done any work himself and knew only how to order others. He was puzzled and did not know how to set about the matter. He spent the night thinking about this, and when it was morning, he bathed and put on torn and tattered clothes and stole out of the palace. After wandering about the city, he saw a man standing on the doorstep of his house and asked him, I am in need of some work. Can you give me some? Can you draw water? There is no pipe in my house, and I can get it from the public tap. The king agreed, and the man handed him an earthen pot and mentioned to him to go out and fill water. Now the king was absolutely unused to hard work, and so after a few trips from the tap to the man's house, he was tired and perspiring. If you work with this speed, the tap will run dry and my water will remain unfilled. Hurry up! Oh, no! I am sorry that I ever employed you. It is obvious that you are an ease-loving man and not fit for work. Take these four coins for what you have done, although you've not done anything at all and broken my pitcher, too. Taking the four coins, the king went stealthily through the lanes and entered the palace from behind. His body was aching all over and there were blisters on his palms, but he had managed to get some money by the sweat of his brow and was happy, if not content. The next morning, when the king sat in his court as usual, Manorama came and greeted him. After great labor, I have been able to get these four coins. And you can be sure 
that they are of my earning. Sire, these four coins are all that I want, for they are the earnings of honest toil. Back at home, Yashoda was eagerly waiting his return. She was imagining the large amount of wealth that he would be bringing from the king. Manorama came home and laying aside his bag, took out four coins from his pocket. See this? The king has given these of his own earnings. Yashoda's face fell and she was filled with rage and disappointment. Taking the four coins, she threw them angrily into the Tulsi pot. I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up. Manorama did not say anything as he was quite used to his wife's nagging. After a few days passed, four small plants sprouted in the Tulsi pot. They were very beautiful and strong, so his wife let them be and began to water them. Soon, lovely golden flowers began to grow on them, and presently they were laden with beautiful round and shining grains, smooth and glistening brightly. These grains would drop all around in the evening, and Yashoda would collect them into a heap and drop them in a corner of her room. She did not wish to throw them away, as they looked so beautiful that they were a feast for the eyes. It so happened that one day a vegetable seller came that way. Yashoda bought some vegetables from her, and instead of paying her, she gave her some of the fruits of the plants. Oh! What is that? It sure isn't money, but my goodness, look at all the smoothness and glitter. I will take it. Thank you. And thereafter, whenever she came, Yashoda would give her some of those glittering grains. After a few months, the king's daughter was to be married, and the queen was in need of some pearls of good size to make her a garland of double pearls. When the king's men went in search of pearls, they were told that the grocer had some really good ones of unusual size. The king's men could hardly believe that a grocer could have pearls, but just to see, they went to him. True enough, the grocer took some pearls out of his box, which astounded them, for they were of the best quality. Where did you get this from? There is a vegetable seller who comes to my house. I got them cheaply from her. It seems she does not know their value. The messengers were filled with curiosity and went to the vegetable seller who told them that she had got them from the pundit's house. The messengers went and told this to the king. Go and bring the pundit to me. When Manorama arrived, the king was pleasantly surprised. Oh my, it's you! Well, see here, I have these pearls with me. I found out that they belong to you. I have a Tulsi pot in which there are four plants. Every evening a basket full of these fall from them. My wife is tired of cleaning them away each day. You may have as many as you like. The king was wonderstruck and thought the pundit was under some delusion. It is with great labor and peril that they are attained from the bottom of the ocean. How can pearls grow on trees? The pundit took the king with him to his home. True enough, the shining pearls were lying scattered all around the four trees, and some were still glistening on the plant. From where did you get the seeds of these plants? Manorama glazed blankly at him and shook his head. Let us dig down a little and see where they spring. So he scratched off a little of the earth near the roots. To his surprise, he found that they had sprouted from four coins which were embedded in the pot. These are the four coins which you gave me when you came from the king's palace and which I threw into this pot. Manorama told the king the whole story. The king was astounded to hear this. If the labor of an hour can yield such a wonderful result, how much more untiring labor of every day! 
The king, on returning to his palace, went to the queen. Hmm, is something the matter? I have something to tell you. The queen was astonished when he told her about the flower of pearls, and even more shocked when he told her how he had earned the coins. You worked! Huh, the mighty king of Bunkin has carried pails of water! <laughs> oh, stop laughing! Listen, I need you to help me. I want to earn money through my hard work and so. Um, so? I will work. You must pay me a salary for my hard deeds according to how good my work is compared to the others. The queen was shocked at this. She tried to talk the king out of it, but it wasn't of any use. <sighs> oh, fine. It's your money in the end, and either way doesn't matter so. Thus, the workers of the palace were surprised when the king showed up to work beside them. They giggled as he sweated for meager things and made silly mistakes. But the word soon spread around the entire kingdom, as well as a new motto, which was... Oof! I can't stop here! If the king can do it, so can I! <laughs> Even Yashoda became more appreciative of whatever she had, and rarely complained about anything. Thus, Manorama led a peaceful and content life. For only working hard for something can make one learn to be appreciative. <laughs>